All right, it is a spectacular day here in Florida. I love Florida in the spring, and there's nothing that says springtime like springtime gobbler season. Glory Ann smoked a monster gobbler this morning. He's got about a 10 and a half inch beard, um, about an 18 pound bird, just a beautiful, beautiful bird. And she put a number on him with those Grim Reaper broadheads, whacked it with the crossbow. He's got purples, he's got greens, blues. These Osceolas are absolutely beautiful, just beautiful birds. I want to talk to you about kind of how we clean a turkey. A lot of people just cut out the breast meat and that's fine but I feel like they're wasting a lot of meat. These thighs and these legs are as good as you want them to be. You just have to prepare them a little bit different. They are a wild game. They're very lean, so they can be tough. Um, any turkey that you buy in the store is pretty much raised in a cage that's about as big as the bed of my truck, and so they don't use their muscles a lot, so they're not having to use those muscle fibers and run around, and so they kind of just sit there and get fat, and that's what you're eating. It's not really natural. As far as kind of uh, taking the turkey apart, here's what I want to show you. So a lot of people think you have to cut the beard out, but believe it or not, all you have to do is, is just grab a hold of it and just give it a little bit of a pull, and it pops right off. Pretty cool, you don't have to put any salt or anything on that, it's already ready to go. Pretty awesome, so I'm gonna set that aside. That's part of the trophy on a, on a uh, turkey. What's really weird is this turkey's spurs are actually broken off. So you can see where the spurs used to be, and I guess he broke them off from fighting or just got so old he broke them off, but this is definitely a mature, big mature bird, um, but no spurs, so it's very, very unusual. We're gonna start right here. So th this little worn down bald spot right here, that is actually from the turkeys roosting. They kind of rest their breastbone on the branch and after time that just wears that down, it's completely smooth. But I wanna start right there. So I'm just gonna make a small incision, just cutting the skin. I'm not gonna take the time to completely pluck this turkey because uh, that does take a, a large amount of time but we also don't, don't want to waste any of the meat on this bird these birds are way too hard to work we put too too much work in to waste any of this so i just made that small incision and i'm basically just peeling it back on both sides let me get that knife out of the way peeling that back as far down as i can go on that end and then i'm going to go ahead and first i'm going to cut out the breast and what I do is I just start along, almost like I'm filleting a fish. Start kind of angling, angle your knife towards the breastbone. And start right at the top and just slowly work my way down. We're in no hurry here, it's a beautiful day. Nice and cool. We've had a little bit of a cool front come in. It's been in the 90s. Late February, early March. It's been in the 90s, now it's uh, end of March and we've gotten a little bit of cool front, so it's just spectacular weather. But I'm just kind of just cutting, working my way down this bone here, all the way down. And right behind this breastbone is, is where the, uh, the chest cavity, the innards are, all the organs. And so we don't want to puncture that just yet. And basically, I'm just cutting that all the way down until that breast stops. And you can see it, it's pretty, pretty cut and dry. Getting all that beautiful breast meat out of there, and it's actually Pretty tender meat, so you don't need a real sharp knife, but I've got the Havilon and it'll cut through just about anything. So now what I don't want is this this whole front area. Basically it's like a big fat deposit. And I want to cut around that. I don't want that in my meat. You can feel the difference between meat and this fatty deposit here. But we are just about there. I'm gonna go from the bottom now back up and that allows me to kind of keep an eye on that, that chest cavity and stay away from that. There's one piece of the breast and another piece there. And that just about does it. And that's a big hunk of meat and that's just one half of the breast. So we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We have a few different recipes that we go to for a wild turkey. One of them is a wild turkey stew. And basically all you do is cut the breast up the breast and the legs, put them in a crock pot and put a couple cans of cream of mushroom soup in there. And we'll throw some carrots, celery, mushrooms, and then let that cook all day and put that over rice. And man, you're talking good. It is absolutely dynamite. And I'm gonna tell you something, when you go out and kill your own animal, Glory Ann can attest to this, it absolutely tastes better. There's something about it that tastes better. You've got, I don't know if it's just mental, and you've got the experience in your head and you worked hard for it, but that's a real 
big disconnect that we have developed in our society is we have a huge disconnect between humans and our food and where our food comes from. This is where our food comes from. It comes from the earth. It takes death to give life. No way around that. We love these birds. They're absolutely beautiful. And it is bittersweet killing them. We love watching them interact with the decoys. We love listening to them, calling them, interacting with these birds, learning their behavior. And there's the second breast. And look at that hole. That is a Grim Reaper two inch crossbow blade. And it speaks for itself. I mean, look at that. It is unreal. So we'll just trim that, you know, trim that, clean it real good. This is going to sausage. And we'll probably keep a little bit to cook up tonight uh, for dinner, but most of this will go to sausage. So that is, that's a good, that's a good probably four pounds of meat right there. It's a good mess of meat. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep going down the legs. And so I've still got a grip on the skin and I'm gonna work my way down the leg. This first leg, peel all the way down, all the way down. Try to get to that joint, just as low as you can. It takes a little bit of strength. And if you can't get all the way down, that's fine. But there's that joint right there. And then what I do is I just take the knife right on that joint. And just crack through that. And you can cut through the rest of the way. There we go. So we actually want to keep these feet, not just for a, a trophy, but we're going to clean these up and make bone broth out of the breastbone, uh, many of the parts that we don't eat. A lot of people make bone broth out of chicken feet. We use turkey feet. We don't want to waste these at all, and they don't have any spurs on them, so it wouldn't be much of a trophy. Anyway, and I'm going to work my way now towards the top of the bird and go ahead and get this thigh. So basically, I'm just cutting straight down towards the, the back of the bird, down away from me, and I'm looking for that joint right there. There's that little ball joint that's in just about every animal, in the, the leg of every animal, up in the hip region. That's that ball joint, and so that's what I was looking for. And that's the only thing I need to cut through is that ball joint, and now I'm getting around. And I should be able to pull this down and cut it right here. And now I've got the leg and the thigh. And other than just a few little feathers, that's a beautiful leg and thigh of a turkey. I'm gonna put this in a separate bag. And this will all go, go, toward, go towards sausage because that leg and thigh are a little bit tough. Now the way to beat that is to brine it. Brining these legs is actually a way to tenderize it. It'll tenderize, it'll put a lot of moisture back into that meat because there's not a lot of moisture. When you cook a wild animal, it typically doesn't have a lot of moisture to it, so you have to add moisture or cook it low and slow with a lot of moisture. And by brining it, that just adds moisture back to the meat and it does make it tender. Go ahead and cut around. It comes off fairly easily once you cut that joint. See all those ligaments in there and all that collagen? That's what goes into that bone broth. It's actually very, very, very beneficial. And that peels right off. Do the same thing on this side. That'll be some good meat. So that'll need to be cleaned up a little bit. We'll clean that up before we throw it in the bag. But that's all pretty much the meat. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this fan because that is something that we're gonna wanna keep. And so what you do is you just grab all these little feathers, as many feathers really as you want, kind of flip them so that they the back end of the turkey's facing you. And you kind of just grab a handful and grab as many of these base tail feathers as you want. And right above the anus and below the joint that I'm holding, you can cut right through that. Cut right through that. And then there's your fan. Beautiful fan. You can put that on a board, put it on the wall. We're probably gonna get a little plaque because that is Glor Glory Ann's Second turkey, but her first big gobbler. And uh, man, it was an awesome, awesome hunt. We're gonna probably put this on a plaque with a beard, the beard hanging down, put that on the wall and remember that forever. Tell our kids and our grandkids about it one day. So you probably wanna throw a little bit of salt. You can trim up this meat a little bit if you want to on the bottom. There is some meat in there, so you probably wanna trim a little bit of that off. Definitely throw some salt on there. But you can basically throw salt on it, pin it on a board, and uh, 
that's your fan. That'll be a, a good little trophy. So now what I want to do, a lot of people just avoid this and they, it kind of grosses them out, but to me it's an absolute delicacy and I'm actually pretty excited about it is I want to get the heart and I want to get the liver out of this bird. And a lot of people say it's not worth your time, but believe it or not, liver is the most nutrient dense food on the entire planet. That is an absolutely delicious, doesn't look delicious, but I promise you it is. And there's the heart. It's a little heart. I'm just going to trim this little fatty area off the top. And we will we'll make something out of that, but that's just a little, little turkey heart. But that right there and the liver are actually very tasty. And then the rest of this uh, will eventually be coyote bait. 